Coming up in November on Roanoke County Today, we celebrate National Adoption Month and get you ready for the holiday season. This and more coming up. A house will always look like a house, but what makes a house a home? Laughter. <laughs> Kindness. Oh, there it is. Love. Hope. Family. <laughs> Could you provide a home to a local youth in need? Learn more about foster care today and help make a house a home. Hi, I'm Amy Whitaker, Public Information Officer for Roanoke County. Joining me today is Ben Jones with the Department of Social Services. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about a special month that is celebrated each year here at Social Services. It's National Adoption Month. So tell us why it's important to this community. Sure. Um, adoption is a sacred and incredibly impactful moment in a family's life. Not everybody can say that they've chosen to be family, but families that have gone through adoption have made the intentional commitment to be a family, um, which in some ways is uh, a strength that not any, all of us get to experience. Adoption is super important all months of the year, but in November, America celebrates National Adoption Month. In Roanoke County, uh, we try to finalize adoptions by November, by the end of November if we can, uh, so the families can be together for Christmas and they can cross that milestone. Oh, that's wonderful. And that's, that's coming up, that's for sure. Um, how many children are seeking adoption through the Virginia Department of Social Services right now? Sure. Um, out of about 5,000, given the day, uh, mm -hmm. of kids in foster care, over 600 are looking for their adoptive home. Many kids are in a home that will adopt them because their foster parents are also approved to adopt. But um, there are children in Virginia right now who are looking for their forever home and haven't found that yet. And that search can be really long and really hard. And it's important that families who are interested in being foster homes think about those kids who are waiting as well as the kids in our own community. Mm -hmm. And how do families foster to reunify for Renwick County sometimes end up becoming adopted? adoptive families? That's a really great question and that's an important part of the foster parent journey mm -hmm. in Roanoke County especially but in Virginia in general. Every family in Roanoke County that is a foster family they work to reunify so when a child enters their home their goal is aligned with the department's goal as well as the court's mm -hmm. goal to reunify that child with a safe family member. Oftentimes that's mom or dad, maybe grandmother, grandfather, maybe a family friend, but all efforts and all hope is invested in this child going to their family that they came from. Um, that doesn't always work out and oftentimes if a child's family isn't able to get them home safely, the next family that is able to uh, take care of that child is the foster family that knows them. Um, so many of our foster families who have fostered a child through the reunification process have ended up being adoptive families. Uh, it's not something we can say at the beginning of a case mm -hmm. that you will be able to adopt this child or this child will never be up for adoption. It is something that develops over time. So all of our foster families understand that you go in prepared to support this birth family and to support this child as they transition back home. Mm -hmm. But they also understand that things may not turn out and adoption may be on the table later on. So it's a hard job being a foster parent, but sure. we've created some amazing families through the adoption process over the years. Mm -hmm. It's all about connecting those children. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right. And so how does Roanoke County celebrate National Adoption Month? Every November, we have a private event for our adoptive families as well as mm -hmm. families that are looking to be adoptive in our foster system where we have a special court hearing to finalize adoptions. Mm -hmm. We also have a special day for the families. Uh, and all families who are adoptive or are going to be adopt, uh, adoptive in our county are notified and invited and it's a really, really special day. Mm -hmm. It's private because of the huge and momentous changes that are being made that day as well as the stories and needs of those families can be very different. Um, but we do it every year and it's really, really wonderful and it's a part of this community taking care of those kids and those families in a way that's really special. That's great. And so if people want to know more about fostering and adoption in Roanoke County, where can they get that information? Oh, there's lots of places. Um, they can call me, Ben Jones, mm -hmm. at 540-283-8844. They can reach out to our colleague, Amber Tiller, 
who is our mm -hmm. recruitment and community outreach person. They could also reach out to Aaron Finnegan, who is our primary foster parent trainer. We have a lot of programs and a lot of opportunities. And again, while we work on Foster to Reunify, adoption is part of our story as well. So right. any family that is interested in learning about adopting or fostering locally mm -hmm. should reach out to us because we are uh, social services and we're where the kids are. Mm -hmm. That's great. And also online, you can find We, ha we have an online presence. Too. Go to roanokecounty.gov, uh, roanokecountyva.gov, and look for mm -hmm. foster care. Okay, very good. And it's a, a special month for you all. There's a lot of a um, lot of hardworking individuals here, all working for the children. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We all share a role in protecting our children and communities. That's why we're asking people to practice safe firearm storage. Just as we tell people to lock their cars, we want owners to lock up their firearms when not in use. Some simple steps are to always clear your firearms before storing them, use firearm safety devices such as trigger and cable locks, and to store ammunition separately in a lock container. Make safety a priority and secure your firearms today. Our four-legged friends make us smile all year long. Isn't it time we return the favor? The Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection needs your help to help keep these pets happy and healthy. Our goal is to keep pets in loving homes and out of shelters. You can make this happen by donating to the RCACP Food Pantry any time of the year. The following donations are needed. Canned cat and dog food, dry cat and dog food, cat litter and toys. Residents who need to pick up food can do so at 1510 Baldwin Avenue Northeast. Roanoke County Christmas tree lighting is coming up this year on Monday, December 2nd at the South County Library and it is going to be, oh, such, such a fabulous event and such a way to bring in the holiday season. You know, we have everything including Santa. I mean, really, how could it not be Christmas and, have, and not have Santa? But we also have craft activities. We have the barrel train ride again. We've got light refreshments for everybody. We have a caricature artist. We have wandering carolers. We have handbell performances. And plus the night is so full of merriment and happiness. It's really, really a true family, family celebration of Christmas. And it's a free event to the community. We offer shuttle service because, you know, sometimes there are quite a few people there. The event starts at 6.30, runs through 8.30. And really, you really need to come out and bring your family, bring your friends, and make an evening of it and make a celebration of it. The other thing is we always start out, of course, with our Ask After School for Kids that are participating in performing, singing Christmas carols. Then we have the official tree lighting. Such a night full of merriment. And this year the theme's gonna be a starlight Christmas. So you'll see lots of stars coming out bright, whether it be in the sky, in your heart, in our decorations, it'll be throughout the entire evening. Just happiness and joy bringing in the season. We actually have some fabulous musicians coming out this year. We have a harpist. We have the Mill Mountain Bell Ringers, which are gonna be doing the Handbell Choral Society. I mean, chorus, I'm sorry. We also have music um, all during the period when we're serving refreshments. And again, we have a caricature artist, so we have lots of other kinds of surprises that will await people as well. Okay, it is Monday, December 2nd from 6.30 to 8.30 at the South County Library. And be sure to get there a little bit early because you don't want to miss the arrival of Santa. The Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection has new hours of operation and a new lobby. Thanks to grant funding, the center has a brand new look, making it easier for citizens to view lost pet listings, file a missing pet report, or interact with the staff. Plus, the hours have changed too. The new hours will be Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Adoption hours will be Monday through Saturday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. The new hours will increase our citizens' ability to redeem their animals earlier and create a better environment for adopters and the animals. 
calls. Roco Alert is a citizen alert and warning system that Roanoke County will use to notify all Roanoke County households and businesses affected by or in danger of being impacted by a local emergency or disaster. Notifications will include important information about the event and any actions such as evacuation that officials are asking people to take. Set up an account to add your VoIP telephone like Vonage or Cox or a cell phone. Sign up today before disaster strikes and be prepared. Hi, I'm Amy Whitaker, Public Information Officer with Roanoke County. I'm visiting today with Kelly Turner with the Advancement Foundation, as well as Joanna Spar, who's with our Department of Social Services. So, thank you all for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, we. I know you all have a, a wonderful program here that a lot of people probably don't know about. So, here at the Advancement Foundation and what you do, describe for our viewers what goes on here. Sure. Um, the Advancement Foundation engineers um, dynamic business and community development opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're mostly well known for the Gauntlet Business Program and competition. Um, it's now mm -hmm. Virginia's largest business program and competition. Right. Um, and today we're here to talk about the VITA program. Okay. Very exciting stuff. Yeah, so tell us what VITA stands for and then more about it. Sure, um, VITA stands for Virginia Individual Development Accounts. Um, mm -hmm. It is a program where DHCD will match um, eight to one. So a saver would save $500 and then they would be matched $4,000 um, for home ownership or for business startup. Okay, and how does someone qualify for this program? Sure, the best rule of thumb is if someone can claim the earned income tax credit on mm -hmm. their most recent taxes, um, then they will qualify for VITA. Okay, and is there, um, are there some requirements that go along with that? Sure, um, you're gonna be required to um, go through a minimum of 14 hours of training so mm -hmm. there's some financial literacy training. Um, if someone needs credit repair or anything to become mortgage ready, we assist them through that. And then they'll have a minimum of seven hours of asset specific training. So if you're in the VITA program for business startup, um, you'll be required to write a business plan. And mm -hmm. so we can sit down with you, um, help you um, strategically compose your business plan and we would also encourage you to actually participate in the Gauntlet Business Program um, mm -hmm. for that training requirement. Okay, and talk a little bit about the Gauntlet. I'm sure there are some viewers out there who aren't familiar with it. Sure, the, the Gauntlet is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, this 2020 will be its sixth year in existence. Um, if you are interested in business startup or growing and expanding your current business and you're in Vinton, Roanoke mm -hmm. County, Botetourt County or the Allegheny Highlands, um, participate in the gauntlet. Um, mm -hmm. You're just gonna brush up on, on any of your business um, skills and at the end of it, if you wanna compete for prizes and cash, um, you can do that, it, it's very exciting. It's been a great program yeah. here. I know it's been very well received with citizens. Definitely, thank That's you so great. much for saying that. Sure, It's sure. very exciting. Um, we live in a blessed community for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Right. And so the VITA program is just a, an added benefit for people. And I know at the Department of Social Services, um, Joanna, you've been specifically working with Kelly on this initiative. So what, what can you share about how DSS is involved? Well, Kelly asked uh, me along with some other community partners to be on a steering committee mm -hmm. to promote the program. And uh, particularly with our VIEW clients or, or customers that come in to work mm -hmm. uh, with our employment services team would right. possibly be probably the best targeted audience as far as our customer base goes. Mm -hmm. And so we had our first meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. conference call, and um, we are just kicking off some promotions and we're gonna work together along with some other community partners to get the word out. Exactly. So it's just a good connection, way to connect with some of those citizens out there who may not be aware of the resources. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a perfect example 
of government and private partnership. Um, yeah. The VITA grant is for residents of Roanoke County, the town of Benton, um, Botetourt County, and the Allegheny mm -hmm. Highlands. And so there's a representative um, from each of those locations that's on the steering committee. And so right now we're just trying to promote the program and get mm -hmm. the word out. And help meet needs. Yes. That's great. Now if people are interested in finding out more information or other resources that are available, where can they go? Yes ma'am, thank you. Um, we just want everyone to go to our website, which is theadvancementfoundation.org. Mm -hmm. um, and find underneath the access resource button of the VITA program. You can download the application right there. Um, mm -hmm. And then that application is full of informative um, details as far as eligibility requirements and just information in general about the VITA program. Okay, and I'm assuming there's contact information if people yes, need help. Yes, um, our contact information uh -huh. is all over our website, specifically okay. on the VITA page. Um, and that's going to be the best place to start um, if you're interested in becoming an applicant. Great. Well, thank you so much for both of you sharing uh, thank you this important for, program. Yes, thank you both for being here. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My love stays when you go. Hello, my name is Brian Klingapiel and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Roanoke County Fire and Rescue. I've told you many times before about how cooking fires are the leading cause of house fires in the United States and right here in Roanoke County. So it probably comes as no surprise to you to learn that Thanksgiving Day, a holiday that is centered on cooking and the kitchen, is the number one day for house fires that are caused by cooking equipment. Thanksgiving Day can mean that there's lots of extra activity and people in your home and in your kitchen making one be easily distracted. So please, anytime you have anything on the stovetop, please stay in the kitchen so that you can keep an eye on the food. Keep children away from the stove. The stove will be hot and kids need to stay at least three feet away from the stove. You'll also want to keep the floor clear of kids and toys and, and books and other pocketbooks and bags just so that it doesn't become a trip hazard. Knives, matches, and utility lighters should all be kept out of the reach of children and never leave children alone in a room with a lit candle. It is also not too early to begin preparing for the home heating season. So let's try to get ahead of the winter freeze. You should make sure that your furnace has been cleaned and inspected by a qualified professional sometime within the last 12 months. You should also make sure that all chimneys and vents have been cleaned and inspected as well. You should have a covered metal container ready to use to dispose of cooled ashes from the fireplace or wood stove. And please make sure that portable space heaters have an automatic shutoff and are plugged directly into an outlet and never an extension cord. Carbon monoxide alarms are important when talking about home heating as well. Please make sure that you have one and that it works. And then a central theme to fire safety, whether we are talking about cooking and kitchens and Thanksgiving Day or whether we're talking about home heating, is always to please make sure that you have a working smoke alarm in your home. Having a working smoke alarm in your home doubles the chance that you will get out alive. Roanoke County Fire and Rescue wants to wish you and yours a very happy holiday season and hope that you stay warm this winter as well. If you would like more information on these safety tips or about how we might be able to help you with a smoke alarm or installing your smoke alarms, please call me directly at 540-777-8718 or you can find us on the web at roanokecountyva.gov slash fire rescue. I just ordered a, a chicken and an egg from Amazon, I'll let you know. Which comes first? <laughs> What's a pirate's favorite letter? R. You'd think it was R, but it is the C. <laughs> You've heard about the restaurant on the moon, right? No, I haven't. Good food, no atmosphere.
A fatherly role model is the difference between your kid's success and failure in anything they do in life. It's just so important and it just really kind of helps them finish them out and really make them a well-rounded person. Just to give them the opportunity to show them the appropriate love of a male and know that they're, they deserve the best and I can give that to them. I've ran into a lot of men who say they want to do it, maybe their wives don't, or a lot of women that are like, we really want, I really want to do it, I can't get my husband into it and things like that. And it's just, being a dad is just the coolest thing. You know, we get upset, we get frustrated as a dad, but at the end of the day, it's just so cool to just sit down and be like, man, like, look at what we can do, look at what we've done. All these kids want to do is just, they want to have somebody to play with, they want to have somebody to listen to them. And any, any, any guy can do that, anybody can do it. Yeah. Thinking about what they came from helps answer a lot of the questions of how they act when they act up. Yeah. You know, you say, oh my gosh, you're being so bad, but you're not being bad. You're actually using the skills you learned yep. to survive previously. You know, you men, if you're thinking about doing it, if your wife's thinking about doing it, just really support it, go for it, and just put yourself out there because you're gonna get way more in return. And you know, we've got our own kind of community that's being built into the foster care system where the dads, you know, we get together, we go out and talk about the stuff we're dealing with the kids. So you have your own internal network you guys can work with too. So there's no one better that's gonna understand the stories and the situations you're dealing with than other foster dads that are in it already. For more information on becoming a foster parent, email Ben Jones at bsjones at roanokecountyva.gov. We're here at Tanglewood Mall to talk about the future of Tanglewood in the 419 corridor. With me here today is the owner of Tanglewood Mall, president of Blackwater Resources, John Abernathy. Thank you for joining our show. You're welcome. Good to be here. So, John, tell us about what's happening at Tanglewood Mall. It's an exciting day. You know, we had an announcement, you know, about a Carillion coming, building out a large children's facility. So, it's an exciting day. We've been working on for years behind the scenes, and uh, it's good to good for the day to come. So you bought the mall about three years ago, right? Correct. And yeah. it's taken a long time. I know people are very excited about this yeah. property and wanting to know what's happening in the future. Um, can you explain this process and how it's taken three years to get to this point? Yeah, we've, you know, as you've probably heard in the community, everybody's wanted to know what's going on. And it's been hard to keep quiet, for sure about what we're doing and what we're doing behind the scenes. But it took years for us to look at our leases and figure out what we could do and where we were not allowed to do things, just like Carillion. We were not allowed to do this use by several of our leases. We had to work through those situations and work with the tenants that are here today, get them comfortable with things that they had concerns about get and get these restrictions released. And so that's where our efforts been to date behind the scenes. And Glad we can announce today and get something out in the public versus uh, you know just having no announcement and no no movement going on out on the site. But from this day forward, you know we feel like there's going to be a lot more momentum going forward. You're going to start to see things going on uh, along our road frontage and pylon signs and lighting and additional tenants and landscaping. Uh, a lot of exciting things that you have not seen today. So how many tenants do you have now? So I don't know the exact number but you, you certainly see that it used to be a mall property and it's converted somewhat to a, uh, to a, a front facing type of property, but we still have a, a, a thriving mall that we can redevelop and it's only about half full, but with an announcement like this, now you're going to see those, those spaces fill in. Well, that's very exciting to the county, and I know it's very exciting to you when you get long-term leases with major anchor tenants, and you know, Carillion's taking 150,000 yeah. square feet of yeah. space here, uh, the J.C. Penney space, both floors, yeah. uh, and additional space further down the mall property. Um, that is definitely going to serve yeah. as a catalyst for great things to come in the future. I'm sure that you're working on that now, right? We are, we've been working on it. And certainly the announcement with this type of daily traffic, you can imagine the businesses that would want to be by those and serve those and have those versus, um, you know, today they're, they're operating off other things that are happening at the mall, more uh, come in and leave traffic for retail stores. Now you have uses that are lingering for much longer periods of time, want to do other things while they're here. You can imagine it's going to be a great momentum. 
Sure, and you know, I know Carillion Children's is bringing several hundred employees and several hundred patient visits per day to this, yeah. this property. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna drive new retail activity here and um, we are certainly willing to be partners with you in that yeah. and excited about that in the future and I know the community will be as well. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to that and we need that. You know, retail in this world, especially malls, is suffering. We're all ordering things on the internet and we're not always going to stores and, and retail has slowed significantly. And so that's why you do see vacancies in malls and vacancies in stores. So we need that partnership with the county to encourage businesses to come here. Um, we need everyone you know, involved. And so that's, it's been good to date, what the county's done and uh, some of the planning that you've done, transportation and the reimagined plan. It's been great and we need that continued support because there are sometimes things that we need to partner on. Uh, sure, today, sure. Carillion's made a big investment uh, in this space, and so we're just we're thankful they're, they're our partner in this one. Well, this is a, a component of implementing the 419, right. the Reimagined 419 project yeah. and the planning that has been underway for the last three years yeah. in the county to create new mixed-use development opportunities. Yeah. Um, you know, repositioning big box space for yes. retail is, is not happening much anymore across the country. So an office use like this is, is definitely um, the kind of mixed use that we would like to see. So we're very grateful for that commitment. Yeah, we are too, because we had a lot of retailers that would like to come here and break the space up and build a store. But you know, in our mind, we needed something a little bit different than another retail. So we've held out and you've certainly seen a dark box here sitting with the lights off and, and that's not always uh, fun to see and you certainly want to see quicker activity, but we were really looking forward to something like this that would spur on everything else. Right, and, and the same is true for the county with the reimagined plans because we now have $30 million of commitment of transportation yeah. improvements along this corridor right in the front door of Tanglewood Mall. Yeah. So we think that that's gonna be perfectly timed to contribute to the new energy that's happening yeah. here. And um, you know, John, I appreciate your leadership, your vision, and your patience. And um, sure. We know how long this takes, and we thank you it for does. that. It does. It's been, yeah, it's been it's been a long road, and we have, but it's an exciting road, and it has taken patience to wait it out. But I'm thankful that it came came thank to fruition. You, John. Thank you. Anyone can start a fire, but who is strong enough to stop a fire? You. The goal of the volunteer firefight is to make Benton and the surrounding area a safer place to work, live, and play. The work is hard and the risk is real, but the reward of helping your neighbors is priceless. The Benton Volunteer Fire Department needs you. Please consider becoming a volunteer firefighter today. For more information, call 540-777-8706 or visit our website.